of the Talk Nintendo podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Casey Gibson, and once again, joined live and in person, the one, the only, Mr. Jerry Jerkum. <laughs> Perry Burkum. Yeah, not Jerry Jerkum, but... Uh... I, I'm sorry, that, that one was... I had to get it <laughs> You had there. to, yeah. After you called me out on, you always fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm sorry, Casey, you have to be in person with me again. Oh, I know, it's terrible. I know. But it's not as bad as being near Jill, but... <laughs> yep, making noise during the recordings and everything. <laughs> What's new? <laughs> so yeah, so we have been to PAX two days now. Mm-hmm. Um, two very, full oh days. Oh my goodness, two very, very full days. And so we were thinking we could kind of run through some stuff and what we played and what we did for NWR and also what we played back at the old hotel. Yep, yep, lots of games. So we figured a double, double dose this week. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we got up on, uh, let's see, we went Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday, yep. Yeah, so we went there Thursday morning, and uh, the lines were really good. And I guess we... Well, we, for us, they yeah. sure were. Well, no, even for other people, too. They definitely were doing a lot better, but because uh, we got the we got the media the media badges, so yep. we can go on. The VIPs, thing. if you will. And then, uh, so we did make it to our first... Yeah, well, the media hour. I mean, that's that was the first one. Oh, that's one. right. Yeah, yeah. I, I forgot about that. We didn't. Yeah, because it's not in here. Yeah, and we got a surprise uh, interview <laughs> there. We were playing. Casey was playing Sushi Striker, and uh, the the Nintendo rep that was or whatever you want to call yeah, him yeah. that was showing us Sushi Striker. He's like, hey, I don't know if you guys are uh, fans of like Killer Seven or No More Heroes or. Uh, but uh, Suda Fifty One is standing right behind you. <laughs> and so I like I'm I'm running the camera. And I look back and I go, and, you know, and I think I even pointed the camera back at him. <laughs> yeah, mid sushi. It might even be on our NWR TV. Worth it. Yeah, you know, like in the middle of the sushi striker. Uh, off. Yeah. So I don't, they probably didn't use that, but um. Yeah, my parents were like, "You better finish up." And I was, I was like, like, "Hurry up, because if he leaves, you know, like we." we... And I was like, "Well, let me finish this level." Yeah. I know. <laughs> Casey loves a sushi striker. Yeah, so those who don't know, the media hour is essentially, uh, we got to go in an hour before the actual show floor opened up for everyone, so it's just easier to get around, yeah. much easier to get around. I mean, around. there's still, there's a lot of media, I mean, yeah. to be honest, yeah, I mean, like, it's not, I mean, it's like... But it was so much better than, like, oh, yeah. so we were able to get into Nintendo without, you know, normally you gotta wait, especially I when I think I was the, the first one there to play Wolfenstein 2. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised, actually, yeah. that more people weren't running to that, but, so yeah. we got in there, and they had pretty much... I mean, we had an appointment with, with Nintendo that we'll talk about more in depth towards the end of this. But yeah, uh, lots of really good games. I guess the one game we didn't get to play in the appointment that we'll cover in a minute was Crash Bandicoot. Uh, yeah, the we did play insane that. Insane trilogy we got to play. Yeah, and it looks really good too. I mean, it looks good. It runs well. The only thing that sucked about when we played it is there was like a little input lag. Not a little. <laughs> that was a lot. Well, that was I mean, no. I, I mean, that was, was like. Yeah, like you could almost, but I'm glad, like I thought, oh, this game is actually way harder than I thought. But it's and also, it was just the input lag. Yeah, and I think it, it could have just been because maybe the TV wasn't in game mode or like all the stuff going on. Yeah, because normally a little bit, but that actually felt like you'd press A and it was like a good sec, like half yeah. a second to be like. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you were able to sort yeah. of recalibrate your how it worked in your brain, you know, but like it was still sort of not great. It but was, they were demoing two and three. It was so funny because. <laughs> the that demo rep was like you know she like could barely speak english i mean it was definitely her second language it's really cute girl but she was she was like uh uh yeah uh uh to jump you press uh and she like let me check my fact sheet and she grabbed like this little like like palm sized paper out of her pocket yeah yes yes you jump with y (laughs) yeah at that point it's like we appreciate the help but we got it from there you know (laughs) Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. not that Crash Bandicoot is like, it's not like Dark Souls where it's like you're finagling right, it's like, through menus. It's like, well, it's just like sort of jump and spin yeah. and slide or whatever. But, yeah. uh, yeah, it looks good. The the input lag definitely, you know, stunk, but what but you yeah, do? that's not going to be, yeah, that's not going to But it's Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. It, you know, it is what it is, but it looks good, like you said, and it ran well outside the lag. So, uh, if that's your, into that kind yeah. of thing. And, Yeah. But, yeah, after that is when you played Sushi Striker. And then we had that surprise interview with yeah, Suda51. Yeah, with 51. Suda51, so, which, which is I cool. think it should be published. 
Yeah, soon. Um, I, it if might... it's not on Nintendo World Report TV on soon. YouTube, it will be within the next day or yeah, two, I imagine. About, yeah, we talked about Travis Strikes again with the thing. Yeah, that was an interesting interview. Uh, you know, obviously, Suda51 speaks Japanese. I'm sure he knows some English, you yeah. know, but yeah. maybe not enough to do interviews with, so he had his translator there, and yeah, it was... Casey's to ask a question, like... yeah, and then he's like <laughs> looking at me right in the eyes, dead in the eyes, Suda51 just speaking Japanese, and I'm like, mm-hmm, uh, yeah. salient point oh, yeah. you know it's like yeah i was like i don't know what he's saying you know i felt like an idiot but and it's so funny because like i don't think have you played any of his games no <laughs> the thing is with me but is the like, thing is i haven't either and it's like I, casey you have to take yeah i know because i i'm gonna like call him suda 52 or something yeah. like i don't even know suda 15 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we're here with suda 15 oh my god that just to see his face probably would have been priceless. But uh, oh man, no! I actually I do have the No More Heroes games. I need to play. I mean, now that I played a little bit of Travis Strikes Back, but, but again, we'll we'll get into all the Nintendo goodness in a second. Uh, we're yeah. actually just gonna go over our appointments for uh, each day. It, the first day was a little more busy, I'd say. Yeah. But you know, I think we had like eight appointments maybe day one and like six or five or I six know. day two. And here's the thing, I. I it's funny because I people I know like you've I've probably heard other people talk on other podcasts about like how crazy like PAX or E three can be, but it, like seriously, it is legitimately like one of the most exhausting days carrying around stuff, like like because uh, you're walking all day all over. Yeah, the you're place. on your feet, and like we were capturing stuff, and it's weird because I thought that you know people would be used to capturing, but it was like, hey, can we capture? And they're like uh yeah yeah, yeah and it's I guess like so. oh i guess yeah and it's like well what are we supposed to do i mean you know so we so we did a lot because we captured gameplay and then we also had we had uh camera uh video video audio. interviews and then we also had this really sweet audio setup that casey brought from uh his friend who, who old justin carney yeah with the hookup yeah so this guy casey's friend lent us this amazing audio recorder yeah, it was perfect. Uh, yeah. And he listens, I, I believe. And so a big shout out to him for that. Oh, he does? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, really I don't know if it's that. every single episode, but I know he does. I think he might let some lapse and then sort of catch up, yeah. but yeah. Which is funny because he doesn't, he's not Nintendo or oh, video really? games really at all. So. Oh, okay. Good. I but, guess yeah. he just misses my voice. Yep. But uh, it's really cool because that thing can, it like, you, it's can unbelievable. Re- you can record like five tracks at a time and then it'll save them to an SD card. Separate All five files. tracks, separate files, so good. But yeah, so so our first appointment was with Yacht Club, because Shovel Knight with the King of Cards. Yes, yes. And it play. I think you played, right? <clears throat> yeah, that's yeah. the one I played. Um, he play. It plays different. He's got like a sort of like the Super Mario World spin jump. Um, like when you like sort of bounce into a wall, he would sort of spin off of it, and then you could sort of play, uh, break blocks. Which felt good. And then he also had like the Wario. Yeah, the, right? the, dash, the Wario Dash. Which you yeah. could do up in the air as well, uh, which is, you know, it was felt nice. Obviously, it looks beautiful. I mean, all the, you know, oh, show yeah. lights look so really good. nice. Yeah. I didn't get to play the card game element of no, it. No, no. Um, I believe Alex did. Was it Alex who said he got to play that? I can't remember. Uh, I'm not sure, but um, yeah. I mean, I it's, it's more Shovel Knight, it. which is obviously a good yeah. thing, but. It's like, I'm excited for them to be done with this so we can see what's next. Yeah. yeah you know, and, and that's not a slight to Shovel Knight. It's more no. so just, it's every DLC is essentially a different game, you know? Or yeah. It feels that way, yeah. but it's just like, I, I don't know. I'm just ready to see what they've got in store next now that they obviously know how to do these games in a timely fashion. You know, I feel like they've yeah. come out in a pretty good uh, clip, so it should be interesting. Yeah. Oh, then after that, we went right to Zoink, uh, our friends at Zoink, to check out Flipping Death. Yes, I played uh, that one as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Flipping Death, I mean, like, it's a, it's really cool because, I mean, it's set up just like Stick It to the Man, uh, very similar, uh, but, and also like the new Yoshi game that's coming out, where you play awesome. a level, very good, you play a level, and then you, like, so you're on the dead side, and it flips around, and then you're on the, the living side, um, and so... Uh, the dead the dead side uh, is is more platform based like uh, platform and then uh, an action based and so you actually have a, 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 a site that you can throw and then teleport to mm-hmm. and then 
when you flip it over and then you're on the 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 living side, it's more uh, puzzle and adventure based. Yeah, like talking because essentially when you're on the dark side uh, or death side. They're like little ghost things. They almost look like little uh, fireflies in like packs flying around. Mm. And what you need to do is yeah, throw that Sith and sort of travel through them to gather them up. And then you see like the, you know, on the dead side, the humans or whatever, you know, the dead human now. And you sort of give those fireflies to the human. And that's how you jump to the living world in their head. And then you end up controlling them and and being able to hear their inner thoughts and stuff. So it's... Definitely interesting. I played a and little funny, bit. funny. Very funny, too. Yeah, definitely. And, like, yeah, a weird sense of humor. It, it's yeah. And, like you said, if you played Stick It to the Man, I feel like you sort of have an idea of what they're going for, you know? Yeah. Um, but last year I played a little bit of the demo, and it was really confusing. And I don't know if well, it was maybe just, just it, a better... Well, that's what I'm saying. This year, the demo, they must have polished that demo up because it really? felt way, way, way better because... Yeah. Like I said, I was just super confused last time, like on what was going on on all fronts. And then it, right. this one at least made it way more clear to be like, okay, you want to collect these things. This is how the Sith works. Then when you jump into the living world, so it felt like a much better demo, and it's left me feeling much more positive about actually potentially picking it up when it yeah. comes out. Yeah, Where like cool. last year, I was like, it seems cool, but like not, not my cup not of tea, cup, you know. Yeah. But now it seems, you know, it's like it makes more sense, you know. Could be yeah. a cup it's of Joe, cup of Java. It's Joe, <laughs> cup of Joseph, cup of Joseph. Um, but yeah, so after that, we got to meet up with the super with Team Meat. Yes, uh, about Super Meat Boy Forever, which looks really cool. Yes, uh, really cool idea with this game uh, is it's a full on sequel, but it's an auto runner. Uh, I mean, it, it, a la Mario, but. Yeah, kind way of hard like Mario Run, but like way, yeah, uh, the way that I and there's some more tools that you can game. use, like yeah. with the 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 punching and like it's a sort two of... button system. Yeah, is what he said. So so yeah, there's like jump punching and then and like an like attack. A... Yeah, I think. and you can I think you can attack like down like to go quicker, right? Or, yeah, or there's that... something like that. Yeah, there's like a there's I didn't sort of actually a, get to play. Dash. That yeah, was, we didn't get to uh... play. We had the we had the guy. I remember his name was Kyle. He was one of the Kyle and Neil. He was the level as well. He was the level designer. So we were taking. So instead of having us look like a bunch of gyms, yeah, he he played it for our gameplay to footage. save the mean YouTube comments. Yeah. Oh my goodness, which I'll get. To, yeah, I'll get yeah, to later. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that game looks really cool. I'm actually really looking forward to that. I I think it's a really fun idea because like like, I, just because I I know and then they mentioned that they wanted to make it more accessible and they said that <laughs> it is. Uh, the game is more accessible. Like like the uh, creators, I think he said his wife. Like has like played through all the levels, um, and she's not like a huge video game player, like really. So you know what I feel like with those runners, it just takes one less thing to worry about. You know yeah. where it's like Instead when you're playing a normal one, you need to yeah, you need to have time. Like all right, I need to run, get the right momentum yeah. going. Where this is just always going, and it's more learning that spot to jump and right. you know where to use certain actions instead of it. Just I guess you know makes it a little more straightforward. Right, and like. Yeah, like it is really annoying holding a D pad, and then you have to actually hold the run button too. And you're yeah. basically just holding it the whole time. Yeah, so it just I mean, takes. Yeah. yeah, it just makes it like more accessible. Better. They nailed it. They there nailed what they were going for. Yes. Um, this next one was a, a cool I think little we split game. off here, right? Yeah, this so one you did not come. One. Yeah, and this was a sleep tight, which um, I was talking to the developer, and he said they wanted to make a game around the idea of making like a pillow fort like you know when you're a kid you make pillow forts with blankets and stuff oh that's right that's so right. Yes. what it is is you're in like your bedroom and these mo like so during daytime you can sort of upgrade and um set up your base there's like turrets pillow fort walls all sorts of stuff you can upgrade your weapons and abilities lots of customization and at night you just get waves of enemies that come so it's a roguelike, so you know you just try and go as as far as you can, and you you know just attack the enemies. And on every tenth night is the blood moon, uh, which is a longer and more difficult night to get through. So it's just it's a roguelike. So you know you get in there, you just keep and try and go as far as you can. But like I said, it's cool as they have a lot of customization. You know when you first make your first puzzle wall, or you're at puzzle wall. Um, fort wall you can end up upgrading those to you know two and three tiers so they'll be able to be stronger and what's cool is he says it's 
you know, it's fun to see the different approaches people take. So when I was doing it, I sort of set up shop in the middle, like right dead yeah. in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw some like other video later, like people like went into the corner and like, so then that would make more sense, right? You only have to make two walls and right. sort of, but like the turrets are cool because then they sort of help take out enemies. Uh, yeah, it was a, a cute little game. I'm looking forward to seeing how that one sort of shapes up. Totally. Yeah, I and then I, and the, so it's like kind of a full on roguelike, right? Yeah, like yeah, said. for sure. Cool. And then you I, uh, at the same time you were checking out Runner Three. Yeah, at Choice Provisions. Um, so yeah, that's the first time I played Runner Three uh, after Jason Cirillo on our podcast after he hyped it up a lot. Um, I went to go see it, and boy, did it stink! Yeah. No, just kidding. P it, it, no, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, it. There's two things in it that I'm very excited about. Uh, one, double jump. Mm. Uh, you unlock a double jump in this game. And so basically what that does is that makes it so you can cancel. It makes the game, I, you could probably say easier, but really just kind of less aggravating and gives a little more, makes it more uh, like Super Meat Boy Forever, more accessible. But I also um, imagine they probably were able to ramp up certain parts exactly. because of the double jump. Yeah, so a big part of Runner 3 is the branching paths. Um, so I think, and, it, and I'm sure that there are like harder and then easier ways to go. But if you want to collect all the gold, you have mm -hmm. to go back and play through it again and then get the harder paths. Um, and exactly what you said, because it's like, well, now that you can do a double jump, and then the other thing they is that mean. you can do a slam <laughs> down. So that's the other thing now. So, oh my goodness, we had uh, one of the, uh, I believe, the level designer playing it for us, and he played us through for the challenge. And uh, he was and dying it, a whole looked, bunch. Yeah, he died like twenty times to get to the end of the level, and it was the first challenge level out of like he said nine, I think. And yeah, it I was think so each hard. World, yeah, and yeah, I mean, there's gonna be so much content. I mean, if you want to hundred percent this, you have to be like insane. But like, and the, there's gonna be those speedrunners that are like, oh, I was able to get through every level in forty five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> yeah, but it, like you said, it has to click the gold. Um. You know, and then, like, there's crazy things. Like, I mean, I, we were interviewing, uh, I believe his name was Mike, uh, one of the one of the co-founders of uh, Choice Provisions. And, like, I was talking to him about the game, and I look over, and there's a bowling... I just look over, and it's like a first... Like, it's, like, right behind him in a bowling ball. Like, your character is a bowling ball now. Like, going straight on. It's like, what happened? What game am I playing now, you know? So, uh, lots of crazy stuff in that game. Uh, it looks like it's it's really taking it to the next level again. Mm -hmm. You know, as as big of an evolution from bit trip to bit, uh, to bit two. runner to two to three, yeah. So and Charles Martinet is back, yes, sir. And uh, to, as narrator, and apparently there's some uh, there's some Whoa! Easter eggs and some nods to Nintendo stuff in there that they were teasing me. So uh, Charles Martinet, man, mm. doesn't get better. Amen. Yeah. Next up, we were at Team Seventeen and. Those two oh, games yeah. were um, Yoku's Island Express, which you got to play for a little bit. Yeah, right? I played it in handheld mode. Oh my goodness, I am so excited for this. Game. Now that's the pinball adventure, -y, weird, strange game like that, right? Yes. So this is basically like another game that I think I'm still embargoed to talk about that we've played, but it takes a, a familiar gameplay, one that I'm not a huge fan of, which would be pinball. And it puts it in a different idea of an environment. Yeah, not like a a, pla board, a, yeah. a platforming adventure. So what you do is you control this. He's like a, a bug or something. I don't know what he is. He kind of you're, you're the one playing. Well, he reminds me of like a, what do you call those a roly those, bug? those bugs that push the poop. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. The common periwinkle. What are those called? No, 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 no. No, they they're like I. You've got me, man. I you don't know idea. a dung beetle. Oh, dung okay. beetle. That's what I'm taking. Off. Yeah, <laughs> haven't sense. you ever seen those? And they push like the pile of poop. Anyway, it looks like that. But I don't know of, what you're YouTubing, but it's, I'm not. No. <laughs> everyone who's listening to this knows what I'm talking about, besides you. But uh, <laughs> but so <laughs> and Jill's in, shaking her head. Instead of the poop, it's a it's a big uh, it, it's a it's a pinball. So you just press left and right, so you don't jump. But then in the environment, there are uh, what would you call them? The, the flippers. The flippers. Yeah. And they're just naturally in there. So L is the, is like blue, and then R is mm. yeah orange. And then there's some of them that are both like blue and orange that you can use for both. But you're collecting stuff. You're there's a there's characters. You're talking to them. You're doing like quests to go around and get stuff. 
It look it looks beautiful. It looks fantastic. I am like super excited about this game. Like after playing it, because you think because like when I thought about like the, this like a pinball adventure, I'm like, okay, well, like, do you have control over it, or is it just like you really are just? Is it like going from pinball table to pinball? Yeah, table? yeah. But yeah. it's like no, you actually do move left and right with the D pad as the character. Yeah, so and it, then it's you a get nice into combo. situations. So it's a perfect combo. Huge fan. Can't wait. Like I said, pinball to me is always interesting. For like five minutes, yeah, like, like one run, and you're yeah. like, oh, okay, like that was cool, I guess, like I'm yeah, done with it. But like yeah. the, to add a little different, you know, add or add the pinball element to an adventure yeah. game or you know play whatever seems much more interesting to me. Yeah, um, and then the, the other game they had there was Raging Justice. Yeah, and, and this, so this was like an old fashioned. The way uh, the guy described it, the creator, he said it wasn't ne- wasn't retro, but nostalgic. So. This is an old-fashioned brawl, beat em up. Yeah, like a them? yeah, like you know where you go essentially from. Oh, you're moving to the right. Then all of a sudden, you sort of lock into an area, and a, a bunch of enemies come out, and you just you know so, beat the crap out yeah. of them by jumping, kicking, punching. Yeah, and then you know there's weapons that you know some enemies come out with like a taser gun or a knife. Or, yeah, and you can I mean you can knife and... you can even pick up like a fire hydrant off the side of the yeah, road and throw and it like... at people. Um, it's got a weird art style. Super um, weird. Like, I've never seen anything like it, really. Like, it's, yeah. Mimicking, mimicking, like, Killer Instinct and, like, super, like, a uh, Donkey Kong Country, like, the, the photorealistic, mm-hmm. uh, graphics. In, like, a weird, invi- like, I don't yeah. know. I, to be honest, I didn't love the art style for, cause to me, I know what he, so he wanted to bring, like, that, like you said, retro, uh, g- genre, you know, cause it isn't, I don't think as yeah. prevalent now as it no. was but wanted to you know not be that you know like a retro game um and to me maybe those games are best stick to retro <laughs> i mean because we were passing one game that was another it was a beat up a classic beat up but it had like a cutesy art style with like pizza and stuff i forget the name and i was like see to me that looks much more appealing yeah of an art style yeah. for this kind of game um, as far as the gameplay, but I think honestly, I think the audience for Raging Justice, I think they're older, a little older. Than yeah, us, may, maybe they would appreciate that more. Yeah. Um, the gameplay itself was, you know, it was a beat 'em up. You know, go and, and do that kind of thing. What's interesting is uh, some, you know, you can arrest people. Like if you knock them down, you can arrest them. Oh up, yeah. And yeah, instead that's of right. you know killing them per se, <laughs> and then they leave back like some health to regain. And then there were some objectives like. This is a wanted person. Arrest him, you know, and yeah, you would get cop, extra stuff. Cop, right? that's so what they it, right? I really like that element of, uh, yeah, you know, cool. a nice wrinkle in there. But yeah, like I said, art style, I'd not really be my bad cop. Yeah, <laughs> always sounds right. <laughs> um, yeah, <clears throat> but then after that, ooh, this is a goodie. Yes, uh, we went to Euro Video that was showing their game Fox in Forest. Um, now, real quick, I need to give a shout out to uh to this booth because they were absolutely amazing oh they were prepared they were prepared they were uh they had pretzels they had pop um sitting there for us they were uh, they were the nicest people yeah the the pr rep and i'm blanking on his name right now because i'm i'm so bad at names but uh he was a super nice dude he's like anything you need this that and the other thing they said they had uh pretzels they had sodas they had i believe it was christopher sousa okay yeah and, and then rupert the developer uh, i believe the uh director of the game creative director right? yep yeah creative um, director he's yeah. super nice dude and this game looks absolutely wonderful yeah uh, it's, you got to play it yeah so. so it what it is is it's it's really a platformer it, it's it is trying to mimic completely a super nintendo platformer um, and they get nailed it, and it is gorgeous. I mean, but the, even the way I mean, you I could see this seriously being a Super Nintendo game. Yeah, he you was. Know what I mean? He was when we were talking, and there's an interview. Um, there's a bunch of interviews that will be going up. This one I know for sure is up already. Yeah. Uh, with him, and yeah, he he stressed the point that he really loved the Super Nintendo, and like that was yeah. always sort of his his dream to make like a Super Nintendo, and yeah, or not. A Super Nintendo game. Yeah. I, I want to make a Super Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> You're about 25 years too late. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it looks wonderful, and it's got a really cool mechanic. Yeah, so it's a platformer, um, and you play as a fox, and you can, like, throw stuff. There's a lot of customization for, like, picking, like, different throwing uh, and, like, 
like splitting the arrows and stuff like that. But um, one of the main hooks of the game is you can change seasons. And so in the demo, I had him playing like through like a like a springy, summery forest. But then like you get to a lake and you can't cross it. Um, uh, you know, there's fish jumping out and stuff. And yeah, you, it's but, too long. Yeah, but then you you change the the, the season to winter and it freezes. So then you can walk across the ice um, and stuff like Safely that. Safely to the other side. And one of my favorite things <laughs> was because, like, there was one part where this, you know, enemy fish was kept jumping out of it, you know, mm-hmm. and going in and out. I'm like, I wonder if I change it while the fish jumps out, what will ha- like if he'll smack the ice and die. Mm-hmm. So I, so he jumped up and I froze it and he went boom and he, and he, and he smacked it and died. And it was just perfect because it's like hoping, you know, so you can. And I think, and I'm, I'm assuming you're going to unlock other, maybe, maybe those were the only two, because like, I don't know. Well, you, the switching of the seasons. Switching season. of the seasons, probably just winter to summer. No, 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 no. I definitely saw other ones. Um, I believe. Okay, I'm just trying to think of what the, what kind of uh, I don't know in the demo. Game. I think I remember it was like, uh, it was windy in one of this, the seasons, whether it was a spring okay, or a fall. Okay, okay. Gotcha. And then you sort of switch gotcha. and then it's like, oh, it's not windy anymore. So the gotcha. gears on the windmill aren't moving, and then you could climb on the platform that way. Okay. So yeah, I think there's going to be probably quite a bit of playing around with that. Yeah. And I also know with the he was talking about the different colored attack, like your different like um, weapons, like one's green, and yeah, if you like hit was, certain tons things, of customization. that yeah. opens up a different area. You know that you know you wouldn't be able to get to without attacking with that item. You know, yeah. and I believe. He said you get those from the bosses you beat similar to like Mega a Mega Man, Man game. Yes. Because again, he really loves the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. he took some inspiration from you know games he really liked there. Uh, for me, this is one... I mean, aside from like Nintendo stuff, which are obviously we're going to be excited about, this, um, this is one of two games that I would yeah. say were like my favorite... Um, that I'm really looking forward to a- the most. Absolutely. I mean... Uh, and I, I think everyone should... At, you know, at least Google it or hit up YouTube and just Nintendo World Report TV dot com or not yeah. dot, not dot, dot NWR com, but, NWR yeah. TV. But we've got gameplay video up there too, and just to see what it looks like, it, it really looks fantastic. Absolutely, yeah. Now this next one I did not get to uh, check out because Chiboy was hungry and he had to get some food in him. But you went over That's and right. checked out Projection. Uh, which looks like a really really cool game. Yeah, so this is from uh, Shadowplay Studios, um, and it's actually being published by Blowfish Studios, which did, I believe, they're the ones that did that Morphite game, uh, which is that like Metroid Prime looking uh, No Man's Sky. Remember that? First oh yeah, FPS? yeah, yeah. That I completely forgot that I'm really interested in. I gotta check that out. You know, it's funny when you said that. Whatever happened to Morphe's Law? Where's that game at? Oh yeah. I, I would have thought that'd be out by now. I think I heard something about that, but I can't remember exactly. There's something about that. Um, but yes, projection. So this is, um, at first glance, it looks, it's like a limbo, limbo style, you know, uh, <clears throat> platformer. But um, there's a really cool uh, uh, hook to the game. Uh, the game, there's almost all the gameplay, it's, it's, a, it's kind of twin stick. Because like you move with the left stick and you can jump. Um, uh, but then the right stick controls this little orb of light. And the whole game is played by moving the light around, casting shadows onto the environment and onto objects and from objects. And then uh, the whole thing is your paper dolls. So you can jump and so they're so light that they can, they can literally land on the shadow. They can jump on the shadow. So you make a slope with the shadow. Um, you know, and uh, so you can understand. How, and then you can actually get to points where you can actually move physical things by doing mm-hmm. that. So, uh, it, like you know, like there's a barrel up on the shelf, and you bring it down, and then uh, to get across the gap and stuff like that. So, uh, really cool. Uh, and the developers were super nice, super cool. Um, that was the one you said, from like Australia. they were surprised how many people were checking that game out, right? Didn't you say yeah. that was at booth, right? Maybe I. I thought I, I thought you said like they were surprised at how many people were stopping by and checking it out. Oh sure, I mean yeah, and. But that's and good I, because you said, that, like, it is a really interesting mechanic. And it had like one like a lot of like game of the show awards there too. So I think you know it was actually a pretty big uh, booth actually. Um, but yeah, uh, I did play the Switch version uh, and it ran great. And so yeah, I think people really love Limbo. So I, I think they're always like 
ooh, that sort of reminds me of Limbo. I'm willing to look yeah. at that and check that out. You know? Yeah, and also my wife Jill, she loved the game. Like she, she definitely, <laughs> she, she's, she. While I was filming and doing the interview, she was saying like afterwards, she's like, man, I just wanted to like say like do this. Do-. Well, I should have done. Well, she was man in the camera, so she couldn't have done it. But I should have just had her play, and then she could have done stuff. But yeah. As I talk. But and then anyway. we would have actually maybe gotten some decent video. Oh recordings. man, I know. <laughs> well, um, yeah, and you know what? There was some. I think there was some Joy-Con interference. Interference issues mm. too with the no, Johns. No. The Johns are coming out. I no, 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 <laughs> no. The gyms are coming. Yeah, out. the gyms. No, I'm serious. Like there really was on the right stick. Like it, it would like hold. It would like go. It was hard to control, and, mm-hmm. and it felt like. It felt like, you know, I'd push it right, and it would keep going right, and it wouldn't stop and stuff, so... There's so much wireless but crap going really on there. it really cool, very creative, very unique. It's like, that's why I think I told him, like, it's crazy that, like, we're still finding unique hooks in 2D platformers. Yeah. You know? You know what I mean? So, so, yeah, someone's always finding a way to spice yeah. it up a little and bit. And the game is gorgeous, and we do have gameplay up on NWR TV, so you should go check that out. But like I said, uh, you'll see me being a gym a lot <laughs> on that, but... That's because I'm talking and playing, and the thing has... The gyms, here come the gyms! Absolutely. Then we went over to Tiny Build, and uh, they, had yes. a, they had a whole bunch of games there, obviously. They're sort of, yeah. a, you know... They're, I'd say they're a big publisher of indie games at this point. Them and yeah. sort of... De- uh, they Cluster you know, Truck. Yeah, yeah. Which, which we'll game. talk about. <laughs> but uh, the two games they had for us, uh, which I guess... First was Garage, which was shown off on that Nindy... Um, yeah. Alex Kowalski was with us at this appointment, and he got to play that. So actually, I didn't get to play. Yeah, neither of us. Kind of like manning camera and talking with the the rep there, Uh, Carrie. Carrie, yeah. Yeah, they um. She was super, super nice and helpful. Yeah, it top down twin stick shooter, right? Uh, sort of like a zombie. It was very dark. It's like, I mean, like from what I can see, I mean, a lot of it, a lot of it was uh bullet, uh, like hell, like. (laughs) No, the opposite. Like not having enough bullets. Mm-hmm. You know, what do you call it? Management, like bullet yeah, management. Yeah. You know, and apparently resource like resource management. They, yeah, and they made the like they made the demo really easy by giving you mm-hmm. a lot. So apparently it's harder. And but the thing is, is like, and I, I remember even asking. I I, I don't even remember the structure. I think it's a level structure game. I don't, it's not like a roguelike. I don't think. But yeah. Um. But it, it's like a Resident Evil take on like it kind of looks like a tw- like a ten ton shooter. Yeah, I was gonna too. say you could if you if. Someone told you this was a 10 tons game, but... Like, no, like, I, I would think, okay, this is, like, a unique... I mean, yeah, I, yeah. Would, I could... Like a different it. twist on it. But it looks... It does look cool. Like, I am interested. Then... <laughs> this is... My favorite thing of all time. <laughs> so, it's Hello Neighbor, right? Is what yes, it's called? Yes, And, uh... Okay, so... They... <laughs> I... And you don't know anything either. So... No. I know nothing about this game. Apparently, it's a big deal. Apparently, streamers and everything is crazy. And after... After after we learned about after, it, it, it made sense. Which but. we learned about it after we had recorded gameplay. <laughs> oh, oh wow, man. Dan, Well, I think I, yeah. So um, yeah. So this is not a game that demos well with no audio. Yeah, no um, audio on a tiny and, TV a t- and like with a, zero instruction and, on what to and do. We had a crank our neck up and yeah that and stuff. And, and uh, like normally the reps are really good at like explaining what's going on, but like. For, I forgot if she was talking to Alex I think or she was, she was a little Alex distracted or something. And yeah. yeah, and it was like... And so... <laughs> so... I didn't want to put... Po- they posted the footage, and I look and like, yeah, sure enough, there's like comments like, I can't watch this because the guy is so bad at playing it. So I just need to say that I literally know absolutely nothing about it. So... You what, know me. I love giving Perry the business. Yeah. But I'll give him a pass on this one. It, it really... So we, essentially... We didn't know what to do. Yeah, so we found out is you're trying to get into your neighbor's house because he's doing some weird things, and I guess it's very you very audio it's sensitive. Very audio based. Where you know you yeah. can sort of break a window in the back and you'll be able to hear him sort of go over there, and then you can sort of sneak yeah. in the house elsewhere. Then eventually you get into the basement, and she said it's not like oh you're now you're in a basement. It's sort of just like oh you're down in the basement, but it's like much bigger than what a basement would be. You know, right. and you're all sorts of weird things. Um, right, but yeah, having a so little. So after like ten minutes, then you got into the house. It's like, oh, okay. he knew how to break a window. Yeah, it, it got a little honestly, bit Honestly, it's it's super hard to play because there's there was no volume. I couldn't hear anything. So that's all. That's literally half the game. But uh, it does look cool. Like it does remind me. We were we were talking about it's it's very Breath of the Wild. 
yeah, in yeah. the sense of you play with physics. You pl- it's very open and it's it's very uh, interesting because you, you you know you can use diff- you can pick up different objects and like throw them to to get the guy to look at it and then you know try to sneak in through the window through the basement you know all that kind of stuff. Um, now we, I am interested, but I do need to say. Oh, are you going to move on? No, no, no. It was oh. about the frame rate. Yeah, I was going to say. So, okay. actually, I don't know if you remember Snake Pass when it came out. Well, you reviewed it. Do you remember that look? How it was like Vaseline, like mm-hmm. smeared, like weird looking. And this how the, that's how this game looked. Um, yeah, and when it ran okay on on it uh, handheld, handheld, but it, it ran well. It ran okay, but not was, so well on TV. on docked. Yeah, it was kind of choppy and uh, I dim. Say, pretty darn choppy yeah and, and yeah you know obviously it's not out yet so maybe it's something to do with the demo oh but yeah it could i totally would be. you know if you are interested in this game i definitely wait to see how yeah. that sort of pans out because yeah. and i <laughs> definitely choppy and it, <laughs> if you know how to play the game i don't recommend checking out <laughs> our footage on nwr well, tv the best well, thing is y- you can see how it runs there's only so. Uh, about fourteen hundred people who saw that oh, video geez, so, already. So, so yeah, yeah, and, and a thousand to... down votes. No, yeah, I'm seriously, <laughs> I, I don't blame. I mean, yeah, it's just what it is. You know what? I, it's like if they want to see a masterful gameplay, it's like you could look that up. You're just seeing this, see how yeah. choppy it might be, or You're how right. it runs on the Switch. But yeah, yeah. yeah like, like I said, in all fairness, so, I will give okay, Perry a pass. So everyone, listen. If Ka- if Casey's giving me a pass, you know that it's legit. Yeah, that, yeah. That's when, like I said, I like to twist that knife any chance I get. <laughs> I won't do it this time, though. But yeah, so our last appointment that day was with an unconfirmed Switch game, uh, but we just we just wanted to because it was Guacamelee too. Uh, yeah, yeah. The devs were like, "This is not coming to the Switch." Yeah, and we're like, "Yes, right. <laughs> yeah." Um, Which, obviously, they've brought, you know, like, um, Severed over and stuff. They brought Severed, Guacamelee. So it's like... Guacamelee should be coming out on Switch. Yeah, so I'd imagine Guacamelee 2, maybe not day and date with the others, but... Yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure it's Yeah, but they didn't... They said there's no confirmation at all of the sorts. So, well, we checked it out. Looks great. Um, I, I... Honestly, it looks like a very much. It's a, it was a very much enhanced version of the first, from what I saw. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing too crazy. I think you can have up to four people. Uh, yeah, play yeah. co-op. Um, and then apparently the chicken mode was very much enhanced. Yeah, I know uh, uh, which Justin I, Nation was saying that he was laughing. He's like, the chicken mode, man. He was like, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I know he really, really liked it. Um, yeah. I didn't get a play. You played, right? I, I did play. I yeah. played it on, a, on a, it was either PS, I think it was PS4. Or, no, it was because we had some issues with the thing. Yeah, on it PC. was funny because it was sort of a cramped booth. So how I was set up. Um, with the camera was I couldn't really hear what Neil was saying at all with the interview. You can't hear anything. If Your you're on big the old dome was in front of the TV, <laughs> so I was just sitting there with the camera, like, <laughs> yeah, nip, get, and then like you hear like Casey, and, yeah. I, and we're looking at you, and you're like, I can't hear anything. Yeah, you're saying. yeah. And the <laughs> the best thing is I could talk like the because the camera picks up audio, but we weren't using it. You know, it's, it's like, so it's funny like, if you listen Perry, to that. Perry, Perry. <laughs> hey guys, if you watch any of the interviews, you have to understand there is so much work that went into those interviews because <laughs> it's crazy. You think because all that, oh man, a lot of work. Yeah, but it worked well. Yeah, it, it did. all it, it all awesome. worked pretty well. Yeah, uh, good. Congrats, like our home team, like uh, Jared and John Rarden are doing a bang up job at home. So. And that was the end of day one. Yeah, so that was day one. So yeah. I mean, like, so there was a bunch of games right there. Yes, lots of them. So now that that was our busier day, for the most, like, I, yeah. definitely with interviews and stuff. I'd say it was our least exhaustive day. I mean, our most exhaustive yeah. day. I think, yeah. Um, you know, I feel like our other days were pretty. It's just like we got to do the Nintendo appointment, <laughs> on, which was yeah, on Friday, which Ooh, was like, literally like <laughs> kicking it in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so um, why don't we take a quick break and then we'll come back with day two. All right. Friday for us. This was the. I mean, don't get me wrong. That first day was good, but this is the. This is the one I think people are going to really want to hear about. Yeah. Because we got some Nintendo goodness to talk about. We but do, we do. Before we get to that, 
This was a. It seemed like the beginning of our days were split. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. This and time it, we each and had. It killed me. Yeah. It was the worst forty minutes of my life. <laughs> but that's actually a lie because my. <laughs> it was one of my favorite games. But before we get to that, you went over and checked out uh, the Inti Creates booth. I did. Right? I did. So, you know, I don't really know too much about Inti Creates. I mean, like the actual company. Um, but they are based out of Japan, uh, like completely. That's what I thought, but the guy there was American. And, uh, anyway, they have really, really nice people. I got an amazingly sweet Blaster Master Zero shirt. Um, and, uh, yeah, he showed me, uh, that dragon marked for death. I think, is that that what it's called? I believe so, yeah. I think so, yeah. Um, I always forget the last, yeah. Uh, so this is the game that they showed off at the Nindy, it was, it was some Nindy press event. Uh, and uh, Dragon you know, Mark for Death, yeah. yeah. And uh, I didn't know. I thought this game was kind of looked weird, like the logo and everything, like the art around it, like looked like really weird and not like anything else that Inti Creates has done. It looks sort of Super Street Fighterish. The yeah, logo. like and I, to be honest, I don't like the art. I don't. I think it looks kind of just not my style. Not my cup of tea, right? Mm-hmm. But playing the actual game, it's actually a really nice platformer uh slash uh beat 'em up kind of i would say kind of like that it's a 2d side it's a 2d platformer um in your heavy of a sense on action um and like jumping and slicing and and uh, uh and really great big pixel art um and uh so a big part of this game is multiplayer uh it's four play you can play it the four players uh each player can play with a different player that has br- completely different mechanics which is really cool. Um, I think that's always a good. Do you know how many were there? Four characters. See, or? I only played it. I only played it with one character, um, and the demo was like it's like infamously short. Everyone around. Pat oh, really? Like when I was talking, yeah, very short demo. I think we have the footage up on NWR TV right now. Check it out because it's actually like it was really fun, and I think that it'd, it'd be fun with multiplayer. I mean, like it was definitely a lot better than what I was expecting. But the really killer, cool, awesome feature that totally has me like 100% on board is that the multiplayer is online. Ooh-wee. That is like a game change. I mean, it's like if we can play platformers online together, especially like a cool indie game, I'm totally on board. Especially, you know, so it, it's going to be really cool. I'm excited about it. Check out the uh, the gameplay on NWR TV. And yes, then sir. you were over... At um, what what are they called? Do you remember their name? I forgot their their actual. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm blanking on the. Anyway, they're a Canadian developer for the Messenger. Yes, and now many people are, are going to know about this game now uh, because it was again on that Nindy Direct just a few weeks ago, and this is the game that goes from eight bit to sixteen bit, right? Yes. So it's uh, it looks amazing. Um, you know, you sort of essentially. You start off, you're like a ninja, and then like some bad stuff goes down, and it's like, you're the messenger. Here, you need to get this scroll to this area. And you go through, and it sort of um, introduces you know some new stuff along the way as far as your abilities. Uh, he, <laughs> he had like the cheat mode enabled, yeah, he had, like, so he totally was able out. to just be able to like, literally teleport to any uh, section of the game with any power-ups and all that stuff, so... You know, we sort of bounced around. I'm not going to spoil uh, <laughs> anything too much because he, he, like, spoiled City to me. I mean, which I don't mind. Um, right. It still felt really good to play. So, uh, you know, I didn't feel bad. But essentially, uh, you're going through and it's a it's side-scrolling, you know, point A to point B. And then essentially you get to a point where then all of a sudden now you're into the 16-bit era, right? And um, what happens is, like you get to a point in the game where time is passed and he was saying that's sort of how it like oh years passed and then that's why the graphics are improved you know what i mean because time has passed in that game and you're going to revisit some some old areas and new things are going to be active and and things would be different um but a lot of the abilities are super fun you get that like squirrel suit so when you jump you sort of float down you know and then you can do like down attacks with the sword um but yeah, I mean, just uh, it, looks it beautiful. So cool. oh, it, yeah. It's super fun and satisfying to play. Um, I believe he said I forgot if it was May or summer, so it's not too far off. No. Um, I mean, this game is 
dripping with style and I mean everything the logo all the mm-hmm. cool art um, the creative director that was that you were talking to super friendly he said he'd been planning this since he was 8 years old <laughs> yeah because well that's what I asked him uh, when uh, essentially I went and played the demo when Perry wasn't there and then we came back and got an interview which will also again be up I know we've said it a million times it'll be up on YouTube but uh yeah I was like so you know did you plan initially like i want to have it jump different you know like graphical upgrade you know um or was that something that sort of came along the way and yeah he was like you know what i honestly can't really even answer that because he's like this is something i've wanted to do for 20 years you know so it's like where can you really pinpoint exactly when that uh decision was made but it's just awesome um it it really as I said before with Fox and Forests, how that was really one of my two games that stood out to me. This is the other one. Uh, I think, again, I, I'm glad it was on the spotlight there because I think that will just give it a lot more exposure now that people are going to be interested in checking yeah. it out. Again, we've got uh, gameplay up there. Um, it's mine, so it's actually pretty good. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I got true. lucky because I had like a practice run to sort of get it. Like, that's true oh, because okay, yeah, like, yeah, we came back to the appointment after. Yeah, and, so and it's like I got it down, and I was like, oh, okay, like I know how to play this. Good. So that's good because honestly, like I do feel bad, like for people watching gameplay videos, like you know, you don't want to watch someone who stinks. Like that's one of the most. Like I remember, one, dude, I remember watching this one video of Ocarina uh, 3D when it came out in 3DS, mm-hmm. and this guy made it to the first boss. And he didn't know what to do. Oh, and you know, so he just you have got, to look up, you know? He got gymmed. And he's like, I, I don't know what to do. It's like, dude, you don't know what to do on Ocarina yeah. of Time. <laughs> what are like, you? Some sort of like, loser? I felt bad to the guy because yeah. it's like, he probably has played it and loves it, but it's just like, when you're doing it... You it's just... also people are watching, and you're in an expo hall, and it's like, it's just loud, and sometimes it's t- a little disorienting, especially if you're trying to sort of listen to the interview while it's happening. But it's right. also like, a, a, side, a 2D side-scroller is a little bit more you know, familiar with other games you played where like Hello Neighbor was really like, what am I doing? You know, so, <laughs> yeah, so, but, uh, no, exactly. that absolutely check out that game. Uh, you'd be doing a disservice to yourself if you didn't. Absolutely. I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be one of those amazing games to check out. Oh, 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 oh,
are complete. Like one of them, you have like two animal companions, and like so, basically, you have like a train, like like moving around, like kind of like on Pokemon when you have a Pokemon following you, you know, mm-hmm. or Earthbound. Uh, and so, and then the cool thing is that really makes it wide so that you can, because if they touch them, they'll bounce off and go back. Mm. So you have that, but then you can actually take them and throw the animals to like, like to get, A last you know. ditch effort, yeah. like if you're on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. I liked uh, Fennel, which actually uh, was, um, I guess, sort of a cross promotion thing with another indie. I forget the game, um, but it's like almost in like a little Mario Kart-esque thing. So you have that sort of quick dash. Very, you know, to get from one side to the other, which is nice. But nice. what's cool is that there are a bunch of different levels, and now it's not just a standard, like, oh, it's a goal. There are some, like, the, I guess, it, I forget the exact name, like a volcano-ish level where that the fire was coming up on the goal. So, uh-huh. like, it would be random, and on certain parts, yeah. the goal was blocked by... I love that like idea. A, like a like, flame funnel where... Like, yeah. Nor, like, but... You know, two minutes later, that might not be there, and that would be a goal. Literally, t- ten seconds later. I mean, yeah. yeah, like I mean, so think of think of the the pillars that that you would need uh, a, to press a button down to to put the pillars down so you could walk through an area in Zelda. Uh, those would be up, yeah, and mm-hmm. just I mean, tons of stuff. And then like, there's different shapes of uh, yeah, the different, different spheres, areas. like the potato. Well, yeah, I was gonna say even the areas before the oh, spheres. Yeah, the yeah. areas are like are even like there's corners and like different types of shapes. Then yeah, different spirit spheres. The the actual tennis ball that you're shooting around, uh, like the one that splits into two, and then it, it's just oh yeah, I love that. Like there's one where yeah, it's like it'll start splitting in two, and literally the first one to hit into the other person's goal mm-hmm. will, is, will goal. is is the point. So um, yeah, and as so there are two player mode, which is obviously one v one. There's a three-player mode, which is cool, where it's two people play the one person who is like a, the one of the boss levels. Yes. Uh, like as uh, a, as Fabian said, it's like the master hand, you know? Yeah. Like, who doesn't want to play with master hand? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And like super strong and powerful and have all these abilities. But I was playing that character, and I think I still lost, right? I, I think I might have lost that one. So it's not like an auto-win for the person who right. has the big Are bad sure? character. I think you did win. Oh, wait, that's right. I think you might have I don't think <laughs> I lost a game. I don't think you lose games, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I yeah, <laughs> and then of course the four player mode is really fun because it's two on two. But I know when I first saw this game, I was a little worried. Like, is there going to be enough? Because for me, you know, I don't have too many people to play games. Where's with. the first player RPG mode? Yeah, yeah. Where's the thirty hour campaign? What is this? What is this? Two thousand fifteen yeah. Camelot. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are actually quite a few. Uh, different single player modes with like a campaign which um is sort of like that smash where you play a couple random um, like opponents on different levels with different spheres i believe and then you get up to that boss and you know it's just so you have a a single player mode but there's also squash mode yeah there's different there's literally different like sports modes so that's you know again i I haven't i guess i played squash like once in college maybe but i I thought it was racquetball i I don't know potato potato uh but essentially where it's like I hit the sphere against the wall, and then it bounces back, and then the other person has to hit the sphere back right. against the same wall, and it's sort of just rallying to see who right. you know goes first. But also like a target mode and other just single player modes that you know, like I said, for me I was a little worried because it is local only at least uh, for now. I don't know if yeah you know, any plans, but local. So that's was my there concern. Is but a, a legitimate like single player mode. Yeah. So, so that's what I'm excited about because yeah, it is cool. really fun. And then lastly, there's the the what hand to hand mode is what yes. we're, we're calling it. Something right? that I cannot believe more games more games doing. haven't done, uh, but it's perfect. And it's where you sit, you sit, and I'm sure everyone's kind of seen this. Hopefully, if you, you sit followed us. looking eye to eye in yeah. the other person's lips face, lips to lips. Yes, yeah. boo. If it was me and Casey, it was lips to lips. Yeah. Which, no, actually, me. And there Justin, is no switch in the room. <laughs> me and Justin Nation, lips to lips. Yeah, you're sick. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, we actually got to we got to meet Justin Nation. Yeah, that was awesome. Great, who does the, the Nindy sweetest spotlight. man alive? Yep, and uh, that was really fun to see him. And hopefully, we'll have him on the show to talk about all the stuff. Oh, you too. should before we we wrap up. Perry was up a, a solid three zero in a, a best first, of, first, first to five. five, and and you know. Perry's feeling good. Justin's, I'm feeling good. Justin's like, oh, Justin's I think like, you oh. got this one. And what does Casey say? I'm like, don't even worry, Justin. This is all over but the crime because Perry is the ultimate choke artist. <laughs> and sure enough, the next five points went to Justin Nation. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it was beautiful. It, it really was. And you know, I had like, I'm like, this is my run. Just me playing with this really, this really hard character to, to play with. Yeah, at yeah. First. Was... I got Jimmy, and I'm His gonna get game. this. Yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna get this right in the. You know, it's like, <laughs> nope. I didn't win one. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't win one match of of uh, Spirits. I should have bet someone. I'm like, what are the odds for him to come back without Perry Scorn? Like. Two to one. Who's taking it? Come on. Who's taking it? Don't take any odds for me, please. But, uh, yeah, no, um, again, on YouTube, we've got direct footage, which includes a bunch of the different modes, but we also have uh, the hand-to-hand stuff. Yeah. Again, if it's not up now, it will be up within the be. next few days. I know they're working on it yeah. back at home. Uh, yep. But, yeah, good stuff. Now, moving along, we went over to Coat Sync, which we, um, they did Sue and Cluster Puck 99, right? Yep. And then we checked out Cluster Puck with six and eight people, and it was pretty darn fun. Um, I'm not sure how much... Again, that's local multiplayer also, so I don't know how much mileage you will get out of the game if you don't have a, a robust amount of friends to play with. Uh, yeah. I, I le- like sp- Where Spirit Sphere, I feel like one-on-one was still really enjoyable. I don't know... You've played uh, Cluster Puck one-on-one, I've right? I've played it... Well, I played it with Jill. We played like two v two computer. Mm. Highly do not recommend that. It is not. It this needs to be played if you're gonna enjoy this game. At least probably and four. And it is enjoyable. Definitely. Yeah, we, we were having fun. Yeah, on we the were show having fun. Four. You need to play with like at least like six people. I would say. Mm. Um, two people. Two, two v two might could be probably good. on certain maps. Maybe. And there is a level creator. Yes, and I can't, so maybe I'm gonna dive into that too. So you might have like you might be able to make like small maps. Yeah, you might be, be able really to fun. make a cool map for specifically yeah. for two on two. One thing's for sure, they they gave us a code before actually packs and stuff. And Jack, the uh, the the PR rep there, really cool guy. I really appreciate him. He showed us around. He actually told us that he almost has every he has. Besides three, he yeah, has every Just single... Dance eighteen, Just Dance seventeen, and the latest Skylanders. Yeah, uh, and those are all dirt. Cheap. He doesn't have the Wii U games. Uh, should, he, he has the full. What we physical should do is we should probably Wii buy U. those and mail it to it. But here you go, man. It's it, finish it. Yeah, finish, finish it, it. off. But so. uh, what I think was the coolest game we checked out there, which is not confirmed for Switch. Yeah. Um, I know there was interest all, in bringing yeah. it to Switch, but they want to bring it, but yeah. they haven't. They literally just and haven't. it's also a 2019 game, so it's a little far off. It's called Fogs. Yes. Uh, P H U G S. O G S. Yeah. Excuse it's me. physics dogs, and it's bananas. It's hilarious. Um, so it's like basically like cat dog, right? It's like a like one cat like, dog meets snake pass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like really because like it's like a cat dog, but instead of a cat on one side, it's just two dogs on one side, and. There's no arms or legs, so it's like a really creepy worm version of... of it's like, imagine a snake <laughs> with two heads of dogs on the end. Uh, but they're really it's cute. It's super cute. They're and really cute, though. So it's a co-op uh, game, and you each take control of one of the dog heads. And it's super simple. Just move around in the bar trigger, right? I think that was to grab yeah. on. Yeah. And they're just cute little puzzles. So it's, uh, you know, in the beginning, it's like, oh, you just need to grab this plant and bring it to, like, this big worm head. He'll eat it, and then you go, you know, you jump in his mouth, actually, and he spits you out at the next little puzzle. But uh, they're pretty cute little puzzles. Um, Like, one of them was there's a couple pegs on a wall where one dog would bite it. The other one would sort of swoop around to grab the other one, and you'd sort of link your way to the other side. And then even ideas with, like, the the water hose where one dog would bite onto, like, where yeah. water was coming out of. And you would just be a hose. Yeah, and the other dog would be spitting out water. Yeah. And you'd put it on a seed. And then that seed would grow into a flower that would blossom and then, like, into, like, a platform. Yeah, and then and you'd then, jump off it. Yeah. yeah. So, I, honestly, like, if I could put it any way, I would say it's a co-op, cooperative, like, sticking together version of Super Mario 3D Land versus snake like mixed with snake pass that's what i would say it's like and it really Fast does pace, snake pass it really does Go feel on. like it would be just like right at home on the switch and and, and, and i not, think it yeah. will be i think oh yeah i think maybe it's still so far away like to i don't think it's a big deal it's not confirmed right. for the switch you know at, or you know or anything. Right, I, right. I think it's coming to switch i i would it will it i put my money it'd be a shame it. if it didn't yeah. but uh i just want to say but like in relative to snake pass it's not like yeah, it's, it's way wonky. easier to control. Like it's like it's a very easy. Game Just some of the puzzles, sort of like with the yeah. like hanging on, yeah, sort of exactly. giving that snake pass feel. Exactly. Um, then after that, where did we go? We went over to yonder. Yes. Which 
you got to play this game, uh, Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. I believe, yes. Now, okay, walking up to the booth, see these guys, uh, I see this, these two TVs, you know, I'm like, okay, uh, this, they must not have the Switch versions out, because this game looks amazing. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, like kind of like Wind Waker, but with uh, kind of more, like, not as cell shaded but the lighting, very, very nice lighting, very nice frame rate. Uh, and so anyway, so uh, we go up to the game, and yeah, and it's Switch. It sure is. It, they had all of them. <laughs> it were, sure is. <laughs> yeah, all of them were, were Switch. Yeah, every single demo they had there. Yeah, and um, really fun, cool looking game. Uh, basically, it's like Wind Waker, but with no combat. Yeah. So uh, and also like it's mixed a loving in, game. Well, hold on, and then also mixed in with yeah, also mixed in with a lot. There's like a what do you call it? like uh, not looting, but like when you pick up like Breath of the Wild, like when you pick up stuff like cra- crafting. Yeah, crafting, crafting and crafting, material gathering missions on the big. You know, so you're on the ship, and then you get to this island, and it's gorgeous. It had a very Breath of the Wild feel yeah, when you ran totally out, and did. it like I, I didn't say it during the interview, but. Like, that looks just like the Breath of the yeah. Wild intro. I know, because he's like, a lot of people like to compare us to Zelda, but we're not really, and it's like... Mm. But it, it looks it looks really nice. I like that idea that there isn't necessarily combat. Um, I know uh, the PR rep, uh, Nick, right, was his name, Nick Clarkson? Yes. And he was like, you know, you get in there, there's a bunch of different guilds, so and the, the it has a rich economy, which is cool. So, you know, one region has the the tailoring guild so you go there you get patterns you can craft stuff now another region you know wants those things so you can bring those over and you make money that way and it seems really interesting uh i and he's like obviously there's sort of like your main quest line but he's like once you beat the game you haven't really beat the game because there's just so many other side quests and things to do that keep sort of bringing you back fishing and And that 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 was may right isn't that may I don't know. Am I making I that remember. up? I can't remember. I, I, I remember is, it was way sooner than I had anticipated. All I know is, is this was uh, also going... These guys, I don't exactly know how, but they, they were... It was Merge Games. Yep. Um, and uh, they also do short-run publishing, uh, like Limited Run or that Super Rare Games. And uh, so it was really cool that this game is actually coming physical. Uh, and they were taking pre-orders there. Um, they also do like special editions of the. They have like they they, they did a li- like a limited run, uh, sort of like limited runs, it's but like, like that. where it was uh, it had like a. I know the PS4 yonder had like uh, art, a little art book, a little like coin from within the game, and some other cool things. But uh, yeah, it looks really really nice. Yeah, totally. Um, and and yeah, we we should mention we picked up we both picked up a version of darkest the dungeon. darkest dungeon. Yeah, we we got hosed. We got hosed, but that's okay because we like physical games. Uh, but yeah, definitely, um, I'd say check it out. Uh, looks really cool. We captured again uh, footage of that, so that's up on YouTube as well. Yep. After uh, Yonder, we had no, we didn't have a break. We went over and checked out Last Encounter, which that's is right. a really cool co-op roguelike shoot 'em up. Yep. So. Uh, very similar, and I just kept. I know that this is. It's just because I played so much. It's, it's very similar to ten ton shooters. Uh, but you know, it's in a space shooter. Yeah, de- yeah, definitely. But a little different as far. Yeah, the setting. Yeah, but um, felt like it. Yeah. Yeah, this is where like, and uh, I think it's a rogue light, right? I think if 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 because there's permanent upgrades where um where you can like you'll you'll the more you play and the more stuff you unlock, you'll actually get more slots to put more weapons in. Uh. Like so, there is like a sort of le- yeah. you're not always from the from the beginning. Yeah, always it's starting over. Zero. Yeah. I mean, you are starting over, but you'll have you'll get beefed up and stuff. Uh, looked like it was it was fun. It was actually really fun. And if they get enough support, player support, they want to bring. Yeah, he plans on. They plan on doing an online uh, co-op, which, which I think this game would benefit from, oh, just man. because again, like. And maybe I'm just being selfish because I don't have a ton of people around me to play games with. No, but like, I mean, I, I, online welcome just... to 2018, right? Like, you have internet friends that don't live next mm-hmm. to you. Even then, it is so much easier to play with your friend, even who lives in town with you yeah, at just... their own house. I mean, it's just how it is. And so. what's the, the cool hook about this game is that, um, you know, you combine your weapons. So, like, sort of like Steradin I uh, talked about a couple weeks ago. You sort of had that two weapon slots, and you can switch on the fly. This you can combine the different weapons. So he's he said there's thousands and thousands of combinations between 
because you can combine a f- a, more than just two weapons together. So just the, the possibilities are, they're not endless, but it might seem endless, you know, and, right. and the weapons sort of drop um, randomly as you're out there. And what's cool is there are, like, as far as if one player dies, another player can go pick them up. They get some of that player's life to bring them back. Oh yeah, it's but like, you can keep yeah. yeah you can keep reviving you can revive as people, many times you as you can. Ha- but half your life gets taken away. Yeah, so so yeah, um, cool idea. Uh, yeah, very cool looking game. Now this is uh, we had a little break, got ourselves some delicious waffles with chocolate and bananas and strawberries on them. Oh yeah, they're delicious. And uh, then we went up and uh, talked to the fine people over at Nintendo. Yes. Yeah, so and this was amazing yes yes it was this was like uh, literally like the stuff of dreams <laughs> yeah for real i mean and now as we were saying before with like the interviews are you know hard work and you know obviously with not like you know strenuous oh my god this is so tough but like getting in talking to people make sure you have good questions and making sure no, the yeah, capture I mean, is, it is all stressful done stressful and walking around constantly and yeah stuff and like and making sure and- you get there in time. You don't want to be late. You don't want to look bad or whatever. Exactly. This was just like we went up to Nintendo. We went off in a closed room. They had nice, comfy couches. Huge TV. Yeah, like it had to be 65 Couple inches. Swi- there was four switches in there. Like one handheld. Handheld, docked. One, yeah, one docked. And we just got to play a bunch of unreleased Nintendo games. <laughs> yeah, for two and a half hours. Yeah, it um, was amazing. So, like, uh, yeah, like, what games... So, one... so yeah, we started... I mean, I'm not going to do it because we sort of bounced around on the games. Yeah, that was the... So, so we got really lucky because they're, they're dual appointments. Mm-hmm. But um, the guy, it was snowing at that time, and they had some weather issues, and the other people that were supposed to be there were late. So we basically got basically both TVs almost the whole time. I mean, like, or half the time, we got to use both TVs at the same time. But, um, yeah, so we played... Uh, Dark Souls, uh, handheld. Yeah, I actually have a list here if, oh, okay. if we want to yeah, just so we don't miss one. Uh, so we got to play uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Yes. Which it's Donkey Kong, but we did get to play with Funky a little bit. We did. Uh, yeah, me and Casey. Which I think the, we got to play co-op. Which hopefully was cool. the yeah the footage online is me and Casey playing, and it's I played as Cranky and, <laughs> and I was Funky, funky and we did is, some trolling. Some I gotta friendly say, trolling. I gotta say that is the best combo ever. Like, like you said, if they made an original uh, Donkey Kong Country, you know, 4 it, for the it, SNES, it would have been these two. The, it would the have been lovable, funky and cranky. The lovable duo, you know? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so we got to play that. And then we also did find out who was running the funky shop. And that was a pair. It's like a... It's talks. A, is the that parent. I believe it's yeah. T-A-W-K-S. Yeah, And, and it's so funny. He's sitting in there with like... His his wrists on his hips, you know, sort of his uh his arms bowed out like yeah. with his sunglasses on. And he's like, like funky and cool. I mean, he's cool too. Yeah, and know? he's like, so well, he's... you're out there, and I'm man in the shop. I'll you know, but don't worry, I'll give you a sweet discount. Yeah, you know? and yeah. It, it, it's so. you know, it's cute. Um, it's good. It, it's Donkey Kong. Funky is you know he can he's pretty much overpowered. If you yeah. fall on spikes, he throws his surfboard down so he doesn't get hurt. Uh, if you do a roll off an edge onto the water. Um, and you keep hitting the roll button, he'll sort of keep, just surf along the water so you don't have to go underneath. Yeah. Um, you know, it, and like, he has like six hearts. And yeah, he's got more hearts. Which he's is crazy. just, he's overpowered. And he it, is, but you know what? It's a like, tough game. To me, I think it would be really fun to play through the game and play through the whole game, speed run it with Funky. Like, that just sounds like something that would be really fun. Like, it wouldn't be the easiest thing in the world. It's not like Kirby or anything. Yeah, where you could just, or like yeah. that, uh, what was it? In, um, 3D world where you got like that uh, power up if you died a few times. I literally was just like, well, you can no, just for, fly to the end. Well, that's from Donkey Kong Country as well. There's the super. They have was the it? same okay, thing yeah. in that too. Yeah, the the. I remember going to Target once and seeing like this like sparkly white Donkey Kong. I'm like, what is going on? Is with that this the game? Rabbit's Donkey Kong? Yeah. Is it, did it leak? Rabbit <laughs> Kong in 2010. Yeah, <laughs> Rabbit Kong. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. That it, was fun. It is what you expect it to be. It and uh, if you haven't played it, which, you know, honestly, Switch owners, a lot of people have probably not played that, that game. That game... It's it's a delight. Completely deserves another another yeah. re-release. Because, it, yeah, it's... Yeah. Amazing. Uh, I did try to pry to see what was Retro was doing, but they didn't get yeah. They didn't budge. Those dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, then we... Uh, well, actually, Neil got to play a Hyrule Warriors, the definitive edition. Um, mm-hmm. Again... 
Hyrule Warriors, it sort of it takes the best of both worlds because the Wii U had the beautiful graphics, but you couldn't it, switch between characters. It basically brings the 3DS game to yeah, Switch. Yeah, and you were stuck on, um, you know, you were stuck on the console, you know. 3DS version, it was a little rough around the edges, you know. It's a big game for a 3DS game, but they mm-hmm. added that feature of being able to jump between your heroes, which on some of the bigger maps is, you know, a pretty important feature. Mm-hmm. I mean, you only played the 3DS version, so that's all you mm-hmm. knew. It sucked when you were like, oh man, like, I guess I didn't kill a few, like, of the guys who spawned the, the trash. Yeah, you know, the I don't fodder. understand how that wasn't part so of it. So then the it was like, now I gotta run all the way back and hope I get there in time. Yeah, honestly, doesn't mean, like, how is that? Yeah, it, it like, seemed how, like a huge oversight. Yeah. yeah. But, but anyway, in this new game, it is awesome. As it, I said, it looks amazing. It earned the definitive edition name. Yeah. Like, without a doubt. Yeah. Then we got to check out. Sushi Striker Way of the Sushi Shushido. Shushido. Yes. Sushido. 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 Yeah, so this is a game that uh, you were super uh, super hyped. Uh, Neil, everyone, Alex played a lot. I didn't get to play. I wanted to, but I was like, can I play? And they're like, let's do a different game. I'm like, I want to play. And I finally got I played like, I think, two rounds. And I got, what did you think? I got demolished, as always. Against the... Uh, Give or take. Yeah. But... Um, uh, <laughs> Well, that was it. Was funny. Uh, we, again, uh, as it was sort of a, a dual appointment, um, when the other guy got there, we ended up actually doing local co-op. Yeah, that was really and, uh, cool. I, you know, I was like, I played it down on the show floor. Granted, it was only a couple matches, but I was like, beat this Jimmy down. You know yeah. what I mean? He probably never played the game. That guy wiped right. the floor with me. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Um, you know, and, but talking to Demetrius afterward, it sort of got some more like strategical thinking of how it works. Because essentially you've got three plate lines of plates and they're sort of going left and right on little conveyor belts. Yeah. And then there's a shared center line yeah. that you can both grab from. And what you need to do is attach the similar colored plates and get as many as you can to stack them up. And then you want to line these plates up. And then you have power-ups that sort of, you know, when you fling a plate at the other person does some damage. But you sort of want to, like for me, I was just, when I made one, I was flinging it no matter what, you know. Uh, but then you learn sort of like, well, save up some big stacks, then you can use some special abilities that amplify the damage, put, you know, and all that. And it, there's some strategic thinking where I was more just like, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, there's and there's a lot going on in that game. I mean, like, it's it's a tough. There's it, both a lot going on, and both like to me, like I still am not 100 percent on this game, like sold on it. I. I'm definitely interested. I definitely want to be good at it. it. It looks fun. It looks cool. I'm not not super big on like every art style aspect of it. But I mean, it looks fun. I like it. Um, I want to play more of it. It's it's so weird. But mm-hmm. the other thing to me is like, is that it? Is that the game? Well, there I, were no other modes that we saw. I, well, no, yeah, there, was a a bo- there was a boss mode. There was yeah, a boss the, mode, I think there's like, a whole single player campaign too in a story. Yeah. So I, they weren't showing that off. Um, but we we did play a boss. Did oh and did, we recorded it? Too. Okay, yeah. so oh, there you yeah, go. and there is touchscreen controls. Yep, that you can um, play in handheld mode, which honestly seem a little tougher yeah. because it's so fast. Because remember, um, this was made for 3ds, mm-hmm. so it was made with the capacity with a stylus. With stylus, would be, so stylus would be way easier and more direct, and with the finger, it's not that good. So. I think uh, the you can do it like in conjunction both, so you can use the. Uh, button controls and then like use the touch screen for your power ups and stuff if you want like they're pretty easily on the screen there mm-hmm. but uh yeah and there's online play so that's good stuff very cool next up we had wolfenstein 2 oh yeah that was fun god dang it, it that it, game run it looks great runs well it um, really does i mean like you know it doesn't run as good yeah, I, I, assume, I mean, I guess I don't. I, I think there was like a little parts where you could probably be nitpicky about the frame rate, you know. Yeah, but, but again, honestly, we have a bunch of video. We have a comparison video up with uh, the Xbox yeah, One check version, it out. and it's almost. I mean, like some lighting things and some little like things that really don't matter to me at all. Like, I mean, I'm just gonna be honest. The only way you'd notice is if you're watching the comparison video. Right. Like, you wouldn't be able to like watch the Switch one and be like, oh, the lighting. Right. It sucks, you know. Right. right. But uh plays really well. Um, what's cool is you can play it a couple different ways. You could be sort of more stealthy, uh, but you could also just sort of, like what I was doing, I was playing it like Doom, where you're just sort of running through, like hatcheting people in the face, yeah. like ripping their legs off. And, yeah, because like, it, was, it was like easy PC mode, right? Well, I, I, I bumped it up to like, oh, you did. normal. So, well, that's oh, why nice. she's like, 
she was like, man, you're doing well, and you bumped it up. I was like, maybe it didn't register. And I looked, and I was like, but the, maybe that one I gun, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, maybe I'm really I've, good. I know my way around a hatchet. Well, well, for like first person shooters, I, I am, I will never claim to be a good first person shooter, you know, especially like the aim and stuff. But I think I did well enough. Uh, you're amazing at Splatoon. I guess. I, I, and that's a third person. Yeah, yeah. But he's good at everything he does. Well, well thank like you. Video game wise, <laughs> life wise, boo. Life wise, you're pretty pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, I'm really stoked for Wolfenstein, uh, and we confirmed they're gonna have motion controls similar yes. to Doom, where you know you can control with the left analog stick and do yeah. the aiming, you know, at, with the with which the I right still haven't com. got to do yet. Yeah, me either. That, but yeah. what are you gonna do? Next up, we played some Dark Souls. Um, I played a very small amount. Uh, did you get? A play? I didn't get to play at all because I didn't really want it because I know nothing about it. It's honestly Dark Souls doesn't seem like a game to me that's really a good demo game because the whole yeah. point is it's super hard and sort of slow, like yeah, not monotonous, but like you're calculated. You know what I mean? So like in a demo environment, you know, to build your own character, um, I got to play a little uh, handheld handheld mode. Mm-hmm. It looks really nice. It was running perfect. Um, I sort of picked up where Neil left off, so I didn't know where to go really. Uh, but I encountered a few different enemies. I mean, there were the just sort of the cannon fodder, probably. And, uh, yeah. yeah, it ran really well. I'm looking forward to that game a lot. Totally. That's coming out next month. Yeah. Crazy. Unbelievable. Uh, next up here, we're getting into our, uh, sort of our indie scene here now uh, with these yeah. last three games. Just Shapes and Beats. This was an interesting game. We got to play four-player co-op, which was cool. Yep, which is I would highly recommend because I think the more people you have, the easier. Because it's like, oh, I think it does scale. It might it does, scale. I think, a little it bit. Does, I think it does scale to it. But anyway, basically, how I, I would I would call this game Avoider uh, in the sense of like the whole thing. You're just trying to avoid getting demolished by the beats, don't die by the beats. Yeah. So there's really there's really you move around with the analog stick and you dash with the button and that's it, right? I yeah. Know. Uh, so, we were playing with the Joy-Con, yeah. which worked perfect. It, it felt re- felt really, really good. And um, yeah, I, th- I think they called it a, a a rhythmic bullet hell or something, or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, because essentially it's just like a song playing and like different things happening on the screen. So like the first couple were easy. Then you get to like one that's it was like a dubstep song, you know. So like things are falling from the sky to hit like a hit the bottom and then it splashes up. Like yeah. water, and you need to avoid it, and you can take a couple hits. Um, yeah. Unless we, there was a boss too who just wrecked everyone, but yeah, yeah, we never beat him. <laughs> yeah. It, but, so like you take damage, and then the 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 game's always scrolling right from right to left. So if you get hurt, you can go get revived, but you're slowly moving towards the left <laughs> side of the screen. And if you're off the screen, you're gone. Okay. But yeah, if you're, you're right. caught before the screen, you you're off the screen. One of your teammates, all they need to do is go to you they don't I have, have you to don't have to, something Maybe oh not. i thought you just literally Maybe just not. went Maybe over I'm them just, i'm thinking of the other and then they would be revived so it's more beneficial to sort of stay towards the right side of the screen because if yeah. you die you have more time to get revived yeah. but uh yeah i mean to me I, that was a fun game for sure um i no, my only issue that i had with it was like it was just kind of like there's no it was just unpredictable and yeah. like you basically just had to play it over and over again a few yeah a few times to, to realize see the what pattern. the patterns are going to be and I mean, it's just like I guess that makes sense. I guess that a lot of games are like that, for sure. Um, but it's like it's also it's like looking at it from a different perspective, like playing through the game. It's not like it's not really skill as much as it is like learning. Yeah. Learning stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, there, there's skill when you learn when you got to learn the. Learn yeah, you the, still need to execute. Just, just but... keep that in mind that really it's enemy patterns that memorizing and, and is, is a big part of the game. But yeah, it was cool. Sa- I'm curious to soundtrack see. Soundtrack was cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see more like what the campaign mode is. It literally yeah. just going through these and like. There's you know some what I mean? cool humor in the game too. Like, yeah. Like the the game designer like talks to you. Like yeah. You thought that was it. <laughs> it's not over. Yeah. Also the like boss, it was, the boss was tough. The boss and there's was like tough. there's like checkpoints. Mm-hmm. in the game and like the, for the boss level he's like there are no checkpoints in the, in this game but I'll give you an extra he's life like, but I'm a nice guy so I'll give you some more life and yeah. like, it, <laughs> like it says that in text on myself yeah uh, next up here we got Dead Cells now yeah. I did not get to play this game I played this in handheld mode uh, like for a few minutes uh, you know probably 10 minutes uh, very cool game looks awesome 
looks uh it's this really cool pixel style game i uh, like almost like really smooth animation game and it's uh, a roguelike it's a right? roguelike like side scrolling platformer action slash game uh really hard uh definitely looking really forward to this game i mean there's nothing i can say that much about it it's just like you start off and there are some sort of upgrades you can get but i was talking to justin nation about it and he said like what they have like unlocked right there was like nothing and it was like really hard to get anywhere far mm. um so but anyway like the gameplay felt really smooth it was a great port looks great amazing handheld and controlled yeah. felt really good i gotta watch some of it on the big screen that that was actually i watched some of that and then i started playing some dark souls yeah um but yeah it looked it ran well on the big screen too that like i said the the art is wonderful, and it's a game. I, I don't know if I'm gonna go out and buy it for sure, but it, like when it comes out, I'm definitely gonna see. You know, it, yeah. it seems like it could be uh, definitely yeah. pretty interesting. Definitely. Now to wrap us up, our last game was Travis Strikes Back. Uh, obviously, good old Suda Fifty One's game uh, from Grasshopper, <laughs> mm-hmm. and this having not had too much experience with the older games. Um, I know the the structure of this game is different with like the mini like mini games in it, you know, like the yeah. seven. I think there's seven different games. So we went in and we played the one. You um, just played one game though, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was like you ran through, and we were playing co-op, and it's just it's simplistic, but felt good. Like there was you know a couple buttons to attack, and you're running around just beating the crap out of people with like a, like a. I, I guess it's like sort of like a lightsaber. I forget the exact name. Like a. Baton you know, or something. Yeah, like a, a a baton, but it's like electrified. Yeah. And like it's it's really satisfying to like do like a home run swing and like BAM and slam them. Oh nice. Uh a, a couple different characters each with different abilities. And again, it's it's a pseudo fifty one game, so super stylistic. Um really cool, you know, obviously the the humor's there as well. Uh when you yeah, got they... up Yeah, when you got up to the boss, you know, the boss is like and and you beat the boss, or presumably, and he's like then all of a sudden it's like Oh, this isn't GDC. This is PAX East. You know, we need more. And then all of a sudden, you got to go into a second phase <laughs> of the boss. So you know, that wasn't, I that's guess, amazing. playable at GDC. So I think that's going to be something that's going to probably shine through that is so the cool. entire game. You know, is that sort of that probably won't be in the game. Well, not the the PAX East part, but, but like the breaking but that's the so fourth cool wall. That you got to play like a me. build that like of like no one will ever see that again. Yeah, I guess if we no, we actually we captured it. Yeah, we got yeah that's all up on there too, and we yeah. got I think some off screen as well. But yeah, it's super stylistic. Um, I need to play No More Heroes. Me too. Yeah, I got them. They're sitting too. on my shelf. I wonder if they bring if they bring those to Switch. I'm serious. I wonder if they do with the Joy. Even if it was just digital download only, you know. Yeah, I just. You know, with that Joy Cons, I think they could do something really cool. Especially if it's like, well, we can if we can make it for one, we can we can port it to, to the second one for motion. So yeah, but yeah, that was it. Then uh, after that, we did the Nintendo Wear panel that went very well. Oh man, that was um, so much fun. Yeah, that 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 packed out the room, and we got video of all that. Hopefully, the audio is strong enough, and we can edit that all together and slap that on YouTube. I think they edited it already. <laughs> you didn't even give them the footage. Though. Yeah, I did. Oh, you gave. Oh, okay. I gave him the footage I got. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Oh no, I gave him the. Oh, you gave that. Yeah, I didn't. We didn't give them my camera. Gotcha. I think that might be something I edit. I don't. I don't, I don't know. know. But we'll, we'll figure that out. It was a lot of fun. Really cool. We'll talk more about that but, later on. Yeah. Good old Paxies. Yeah, man. It was a lot of fun. A lot of work. Really tired. <laughs> yeah. But a lot it, of fun. It, you know, it's fun, and you, then you come back to the hotel, and Perry's still here, and you're like, oh. oh. I just want to be alone. He keeps playing <laughs> Cluster Truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were gonna do a little talking about the games we have been playing, but I think we're getting a little long in the tooth here, and there is some uh, Thai food to be ordered. Yes. Or Vietnamese, I guess we just learned. Yes. We thought it was Thai. We're ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, really, a lot of great games. Again, obviously, as we've been saying throughout the whole thing. Check uh, Nintendo World Report TV on YouTube for all the gameplay and interview videos. Um, like I said, I know there are some up now. There's just going to be sort of a constant flow, yeah, probably for the next the week or so. Out. There's gameplay. There will be interviews, and yeah, like you said, like and just straight gameplay. Um, so exactly. Yeah. Cool. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that's pretty much I, all we've got to say. I think I have my peace. Yeah, I think I've um, I'm at peace. With what we've said right here and now. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so I guess we'll see you. Who knows when we'll see you? We don't know. 
Probably next week at normal time. Yeah, probably Thursday, around 7.30 Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, until next time. Giddy up. Uh, 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 uh. But I'm not, uh, I'm not, not, I'm trying to think of the word. Like how you would say quenched for thirsty, what it's would it. you say? No, but like for food, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not full. I need a, uh, I don't know, satisfied? I'm just rambling here. What's up? Satisfied? Is there a word, like, you know what, oh, my thirst is quenched. My like, hunger is. I guess satisfied, or, you my know, like. Is there's not like a nice elegant word for it, you know. Sort of like how Fabian was saying, like, like, what, like, listen to this, like, show me, show me, you know, like, I want to show you this. Yeah, there's no equivalent for. Yeah. I want you to listen to this. Yeah. I want to have you listen to this. Yeah. There's no word. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna edit that. Out. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs>